This podcast is part of the C-Suite Radio Network, turning the volume up on business. Hey, it's Chris Kirkpatrick, and welcome to the Executive Job Search Secrets Podcast. In today's episode, I want to talk about something that's a really sensitive topic for a lot of people, and that is ageism. We all know most executive level positions are not posted or advertised. So the big question is this, if those 100K plus jobs are not posted or advertised, how do you go about your job search in a way so you can find the right companies, connect with the right people, and land your next ideal opportunity as quickly as possible and without compromise? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Chris Kirkpatrick, and welcome to Executive Job Search Secrets. Okay, so I am actually really excited to get into this conversation because it's something that I run into on a very regular basis with the people that we help. Um, I was actually just having a conversation with this uh, with a gentleman named Norbert who has just joined our team. Um, he is actually going to be uh, one of our coaches, and it's really exciting to have him join the team. But his background is actually from the medical device and medical tech industry. And we were having a conversation around ageism because uh, of a specific client that we were discussing. And it's interesting because I think ageism is real. Um, I think it's obvious that ageism is real. And I think people get impacted by ageism in different ways. Now, there are a lot of ways. I'm not going to try to get into making a list of all the reasons ageism happens. What I want to talk about in this episode are the top two reasons that I see ageism happening. And there's a couple reasons for it. So, if you think about it, um, using he brought up an example, and that example was the medical tech space. And so when you have sales executives that are growing up and have built their career in that space, there's a couple things that come into it. So if you're a 50-year-old medical device salesperson, the challenge is when you grew your business, when you were building your business and building relationships, now you have all those relationships. If you go to a company, if you're looking to join a company, and that company already has an established presence, well, then the salesperson's job ultimately is to, uh, to build new relationships. But if they're, I guess if they're a new company, the, job is to, your, the salesperson's job is to build new relationships. If it's an established, now you have to just manage those relationships. And so from that perspective, the seasoned sales executive in that space, their value is diminished, right? So the challenge is, they, if they already have an established clientele, they can go hire somebody who's 28, 35. It doesn't matter. Somewhere in that range, somebody with a lot less experience, they can pay them far less and ultimately accomplish a very similar result with the right training, right? Now, if you are joining a new, like a startup medical device company, that's where somebody who is older, uh, who is a little bit more mature, who has a bit more of a network and experience, that's where you you have an, a, a significant strategic advantage, right? And that's where if you're going to be positioning yourself on your resume and branding yourself, you need to make sure that you're focusing on that and you're targeting and identifying and targeting the, the right companies, key decision makers, so on and so forth, to be able to, to set yourself up for more success, right? And so that's a big thing. So reason number one is that your value is diminished uh, unless you are targeting the right company. Now, the other reason that I see ageism happening, and this is just for me personally, because um, I don't focus in any industries with our clients. We, we, we are far, uh, we have a really wide scope of industries that we help people in. Uh, we focus more on principles than industries because people hire people. Um, and it comes down to that. So think about it for, as a, from a people perspective, we all want to work with people that we relate to, right? And so in a lot of companies nowadays, they're startups, they're very tech focused, they're very um, uh, disruptive and transformational, and, and that's just the environment uh, that, and the cultures that are being created. And so the challenge then becomes, if you have uh, a leader of a company, an organization that is 35 to 40 years old, and that individual is surrounded by a team of 28 to 30 year olds, let's say, and now you have a 55 year old applying for the position there's two elements of that search that are challenging a you're not seeming as similar as them because maybe instead of having kids that are five and six years old you have 
grandkids or maybe that are just being born or your kids are out of college and like you're at a different stage of life and that's not bad but it is you know creating dissimilarity for between you and them which obviously is a challenge now there are also benefits and i'll get to that in a second um but that that's the first thing and that may not be as big a deal here's the big deal don't don't discard that though because it is relevant but here's the absolute biggest part of it that i think is relevant they are concerned because the world is changing so fast technology is changing fast industries are evolving like the way that businesses are growing it's it's at light speed these days right and so if you're 55 or 50 or or you know let's say 10 to 15 years older than your contemporaries for the position you're going for now what are we talking about we're, we're, they're they're not concerned with your age they're concerned about your relevancy they're concerned about um, your ability to have kept up with what's going on in the industry. So this is where a lot of people wonder why I think LinkedIn is so important. This is why I think LinkedIn is so important right here, because it enables you to build your brand and show relevancy. If you're concerned about ageism, I would say they're not concerned that you're older they're concerned that you're going to be relevant, that you're going to understand and really understand all the moving parts of the position, and they're concerned you're going to fit in with their culture, right? And don't don't throw that that culture part out because it is so so vital. That is one of the most uh, biggest cogs in the wheel. That, that's one of the easiest ways that you could derail success is by bringing the wrong person in to the culture that throws it all off, and that can be seriously negatively impactful, right? So. What I want to say and what I want to get across is when you're going for a position, if you feel like you've been struggling with ageism, then it's something that's an area that you just need to focus on building a different story around it. Remember, stories, your ability to sell yourself is going to be based around your ability to identify the challenges that the company's having, articulate solutions, and make yourself relevant. Make them believe that you are the person that can solve that problem, right? So if you can come in and and show them with your LinkedIn profile that you are passionate about the industry, that you are somebody that keeps up on technology, that you are somebody who is a thought leader in your space or is very tuned in and dialed in to all the things that are going on around you uh, in in your industry, it is going to help you extremely in the success of of being able to differentiate yourself in your position because now you're showing that you're relevant you're showing that you're on these newer platforms like linkedin a lot of people in their 50s fight linkedin if you show yourself as somebody who is not just willing to um, be on linkedin and be present on linkedin but somebody who just really embraces the technology embraces the social media and contributes to it and tries to be a leader on it that's going to show that you have the mindset of somebody who is probably the same mindset as the contemporaries that are going for the position that you're looking for right and so when you do that it ultimately just makes you uh relatable relevant and whatever to them now you can take your background, your experience, your successes, your expertise. I mean, if you're if you're older, you've probably done this with two or three or four other companies. So now you can go in and identify those challenges that they're probably either having, maybe they don't even know that they're gonna have those challenges or specific challenges yet, and you can kind of be that leader for them. I always say, don't go into an interview reactively. You want to go in as a consultant. So go in acting, using your experience as that consultant, identifying those challenges, articulating the solutions in a way that, quite frankly, no other 35-year-old would be able to do compared to your experience, right? Take that and leverage it. Use that experience. And I promise you, people make decisions emotionally and then they validate those decisions with logic. That's where people get wrong. If you're feeling like you're being discriminated against, let's say, based on ageism, it's because you're not focusing on getting them to make the emotional decision first, and you're not realizing what has them make that emotional decision, right? What causes them to actually want to lean your direction? First things first, they got to they gotta be able to picture that they want to work with you every single day. You have to be relevant, and then once you have them bought into the fact that they're going to like you, that you're going to be relevant, 
that will build the trust. And then now when you go to step in and show them your quantifiable results and you talk to them about your successes and, 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 and the, your vision for the future, for what you can do in that company, you can give them that, but if they don't think you're relevant in the first place, they're not going to be open to hearing what you actually have to say. So anyway, those are the two things when it comes, actually, I guess I expanded a little bit more than two. It was like two, B, three, you know, C, something like <laughs> something of that nature. Um, but ultimately those are the two main overriding reasons that I think ageism happens. And, and I think if you focus on that, it'll make a huge impact, uh, in, in the results that you're getting with your search. So I hope that helps. I hope you go out there and crush it. Best of luck in all that you do with your job search and feel free to reach out if you have any questions or any need at all. You can always go to careernextagency.com and we're here to help. Thanks so much for listening and I hope you were able to find some value in this episode. And I'm so excited to announce that I just launched my first book, Executive Job Search Secrets. You can get your copy for $19.99 going over to amazon.com right now. Or because of everything that's happening in the world right now, with COVID, all the uncertainty, the high unemployment rates, I've actually purchased a thousand copies of this book and I'm gonna send a copy to the first 1,000 people that wanna take advantage of this free offer. I'm on a mission to help people get positive results in their job search and I know that the information in this book will make a positive impact in your life. So with that, I've ordered a thousand copies, I've paid for them, I wanna send a free copy to everybody that wants to take advantage of this offer. All I ask of you is to cover the $8.95 for shipping and handling, and I will do the rest. I will get a copy right out to you in the mail as quickly as possible. All you have to do is go to executivejobsearchsecrets.com, enter your information, click the button, and I will send it right out to you. And I hope you have the best of luck with your search. Go out and crush it, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Like what you just heard, visit c-suiteradio.com. C-Suite Radio, turning the volume up on business.